Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 618, written by MemerBoy18. See mom, studying is dangerous. I, 17 male, was studying in my room with my door locked. I started writing a mock test at 1346 and started timing my test with my watch's stopwatch. Compared to the previous test that I had attempted, this one was fairly easy. I remember starting question 4 at 1424 while the stopwatch showed 38 minutes. Question 4 was the easiest in the paper and it felt like it took 5 to 6 minutes at the most. It couldn't have been more than 10 minutes. After I got done with the question, I heard my dog barking, which stopped my train of thought. I looked up from the paper, and the time on the clock was 1532. I checked my stopwatch to confirm whether or not this was a glitch, and it too displayed 1 hour and 46 minutes. This is really freaking me out. Can anyone explain this or has anyone had a similar experience? To note, I do have narcolepsy, and at first I thought that this was just another episode. But I always remember waking up from my episodes. This time, I was fully awake and aware of my surroundings the entire time. Also, this may be unrelated, but I took the second dose of the vaccine today. I reluctantly spoke to my mom about my experience, and as I expected, she was very skeptical. However, I want to share that she mentioned talking to me through the door, asking me to give my dog lunch at around 15.15. According to her, I yelled back, No! I do not remember this exchange of words at all and it's quite confusing because A, my mom hardly has to remind me to feed my dog, I've had her for around 6 years now and I feed her at around 3 pretty much on autopilot. And B, she said that she was conducting an online yoga class, she's a yoga instructor, from 2 to 3 and that I was sitting in the living room until 2 which is impossible since I was studying in my room at the time. What is going on? Case Notes, file number 618. So as you mentioned you have narcolepsy. The logical thought here then is that you did blank out even if it's unusual for you to do so without remembering yourself waking up. Though the strange aspect is your mom saying that you were in the living room during this episode. According to her you were in the living room until 2. I'm not that well versed on narcolepsy but I always thought of it as sudden sleep syndrome basically. I suppose it's not impossible to have narcolepsy combined with sleepwalking. It sounds like it'd be exceptionally rare, but not inconceivable. As far as the glitch explanations go, none come obviously to mind. I mean, for aliens, the time of day doesn't match and your mom did notice you still there during the time anomaly. So unless an alien is abducting you and then replacing you with a clone temporarily. I am a bit at a loss here because the time this happened coinciding with your mom seeing you beforehand and after with you saying no to feeding the dog during the event, well the only thing I can conclusively say is it's probably not aliens. Creepy file number 20, written by Amanda Can 77 It's good practice to make sure people have feet. So this happened almost 10 years ago but it still gives me creeps whenever I think about it. I was finishing college, living back with my parents in our sleepy little town and had rekindled an old friendship from high school to pass my days. Madison was a chill girl and I got along pretty well with her boyfriend and brothers, so I ended up spending a fair amount of time over at her place. Madison's mom was a nurse who enjoyed training for marathons, so if she wasn't at work she was usually out running. Her dad, on the other hand, was off on disability and home every day, except for delivering the paper around the neighborhood at around 4 a.m. Through passing conversation with Madison, I learned he had been a professor before going off work, but I didn't feel it was my place to inquire any further than that. He was never anything but pleasant to me during our interactions, but I was always struck with the notion that he seemed very distracted by something, as if there was always another conversation happening that he needed to return to. My parents are the type who always have questions about my friends, even if I was a 22 year old college student, so I filled them in on what I knew and where I had been spending my afternoons. My mom asked me if I knew what her dad was off on disability for. I told her I did not, at which point my dad piped up and said he believes he deals with some mental illness. 
He then gently explained that he had responded to a 911 call with the volunteer fire department to go retrieve Madison's father out of the garage after a failed suicide attempt. My heart went out to everyone involved, and my questions surrounding her dad were satisfied. I continued hanging around Madison and her family for the rest of the summer, never having any issues besides a hangover the next day. One night, we were all over at Madison's house celebrating someone's birthday, I think. Everyone was congregating in the kitchen, sharing snacks, drinking wine, dancing. Even Madison's parents were down and having a good time with us. Her dad came over to me calmly with his drink and asked if he could speak to me in the other room just off the kitchen. I agreed and followed him, thinking he was probably going to ask me to move my car. When we got into the other room, I could see the concerned look on his face and became a little worried, hoping I hadn't done something wrong. Amanda, I don't mean to scare you, but my paper route is through your neighborhood and I saw something the other night while I was heading down your street. I noticed a man coming towards me on the other side of the road. I don't usually see anybody else out that early, so I was a little surprised, but as he got closer, I noticed he had no feet. He made eye contact with me as he said the last part, and I could tell he was being serious. I had no idea what to do, and I just froze, and he just floated on past, he said with a dramatic arm wave. He then began to shake his head as if saying no. Anyways, I think it's a reaper, and I thought you should know. He made eye contact again, but smiled sweetly. I picked up my jaw off the floor and managed to thank him for letting me know. He nodded dutifully and went back into the other room, rejoining the party. I told Madison about it later on in the evening, just so that she would know what was going on with her dad. She seemed embarrassed, but not surprised by this information, and told me to ignore her dad because he was crazy. Her dad carried on as usual around me after that and never brought it up to me again. After I finished college and moved out, Madison and I sort of lost touch. I really don't think about her that often. I do, however, always check to make sure people have feet when I'm out walking in the early morning hours. Creepy File Number 21 Written by G. Griffin Did you miss me? So when I was about 11, I would love to ride my bike. I could do it for hours. One day, I decided to go to the forest. It was near the village I was living in, one kilometer away. Around 40 meters away from it, I noticed something. It was something white in the grass on the left side of the road under a rock. There was a piece of paper with a rock on it, and on the paper was written with charcoal. Hello. As a dumb kid, I came back the next day. The paper piece was still there, but when I got there, I also had a piece of paper with the word, Hi. Then I came back the next day too, and it was written on it, How are you? I had a paper and a pen with me, and I wrote back, I'm good, you? Things were going really well. Once, I tried staying there the entire day and night to find out who was the dude that was writing those. I told my parents I would stay with a friend. It was in vain. No one came. Time passed, and we became really good friends. We would have conversations and we grew really close. One day, not intentionally, we just stopped talking. I came to the place less and less until I stopped. In the last letter, I remember the last thing he wrote was, Gonna miss you. Around 20 years passed, I'm 32, and I found a note written on paper with charcoal with a rock on top of it in the front of my house. Missed me? So this is my most sincere, what the hell? No one knew about that, so how the hell could this be a prank? What the hell? One day passed. I took the paper inside my house, left it inside my drawer. I'm not sure how to feel about this, but I am somehow happy as long as he's not some evil murderer. I don't think he is. Any thoughts are welcome. 